In this video I'm going to be looking at this Ford GPA, a 1 16th scale amphibious wagon. And uh, it says here, ready to run RC model, drive and swim, functional ship propeller, and proportional all wheel drive. And this was on Motion RC and it's hundred and sixty dollars we're going to be looking at it see what it takes to put together charge and eventually so at the end of the video we should be able to get it running there we go it slides out and we've got the windshield is setting up here We'll get back to that. Probably about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch movement. So we've got a remote. We've got a USB charging cable. And a battery. 280 milliamp hours, 7.4 volt. And we've got two packages of our AA batteries each. And warning, do not push the car forwards or backwards with your hand when it is switched off. No warranty for damages resulting from this. And we have the decal sheet. So this is a Ford GPA USMC Pacific 1944 decals and on the bottom here it's the Normandy 1944 US Army. Also we have the instruction manual. Different languages. It's in German, English, French, Spanish, and Italian. Driving instructions. Remote control binding. Hopefully it'll already be bound, but if not, we'll follow the, those instructions. The decal application and the different layouts. And we'll flip it on, and we have our power light. Open the engine compartment by turning the lock. So the lock is here. Now well, it's a little bit more than turning the lock, it's unscrewing it. And complete. But I think first what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to charge the battery. So let's take a look and see what the instructions are on charging the battery. Let's see, flashing green is charging, solid red is standby, solid green is charging complete. 280 milliamps and a charger is a 500 milliamp hour. It should be a little over half an hour to charge. Now there's two water detection pins down here in the bottom that when they're wet, that'll allow the propeller to turn. Looks like the steering is also connected to the rudder. So left and right for steering is also left and right or port and starboard. So in order to go forward in the water, it just has to be wet. And then you press the auxiliary button, which is right here. Press it once to start the propeller. Press it again to stop. I can't quite see if there's a separate motor for the propeller or if it's driven off the same electric motor. It is four wheel drive. We could see the connections to the gearbox here, which is underneath inside. We see the electric motor. And it's pretty small. And there seems to be something else under 
the driver's seat, which I have no idea what it is. Now here's two points I'd like to point out in the instruction manual. We're going to read under the caution notes. And should the model or interior or remote control get wet due to rain or immersion in water, stop operating the model because this may cause malfunctions. Remove all batteries and contact your local dealer. And do not expose the model or the remote control to strong sunlight. This may cause deformation or malfunction. We're going to say that this is not a submarine. It'll go in the water, but we don't want the water to go in it. We'll watch for too much sand, mud, dirt, or an uneven surface, which leads to malfunctions or damage. That also applies to carpets and lawns and other surfaces, which cause an excessive resistance leading to damage. Looks like uh, battery time was probably a little bit over half an hour. And let's get that plugged in and see if this thing will start. And I really didn't tell you where the battery goes, but there's a little tab inside here that looks like it just lays on the side here. And I imagine with the covers in it, it'll hold the wires down in place. And so we should be okay there. First, we're going to turn on the transmitter. And a nice set of lights up in here and the different functions. And also, so there's adjustments, sub trims. And to turn on the vehicle. It's underneath the dashboard on the right side. There's a little slide switch in there. Just slide that on. And we saw our LED light come on in here. And let's jack the vehicle up a little bit and let's try. Left and right. So that works. Let's see how fast this vehicle is or how slow it is. I'm we have a little tabletop here I'm working on. And we'll just give it a little bit of a throttle. Not too bad. Let's see how it works a little faster. Oh, it takes off. So it looks like it's a pretty good vehicle so far. We'll seal this guy up. And at another time, we'll get the decals put on. seems to fit pretty good here. <laughs> I thought this came with a driver, but I didn't see one in the box. So I'll take another look. Nope, no driver. Also have this little water deflector up here in the bow for when it's in the water and when it's on land it is a deflector on the front now all we need is the decals and the windshield and a driver and we're set to go as for the scale at 1 16th of it measures very close to actually almost right on uh, to what the specifications are for this vehicle so scale wise everything looks pretty good on it everything is in its right place if you notice the, the front side of the vehicle up here on the upper deck that this has got a curve to it whereas on the real one and all of the photos that I found it looks like it's not quite rounded like this. It looks like it comes uh, maybe a little bit of a 45 degree angle and then has a little bit of a curve to it up in this area in here. So that is uh, a little bit off there. And the only other thing that I noticed is the steering wheel. And that's true with a lot of models. The steering wheels are typically smaller so you can get a figure in here much easier but if you look at the difference between the figure steering wheel here and the steering wheel there 
Uh, that one is almost 50% larger. Careful when you put these in the water. You don't want it to go down a sharp slope where it will scoop up water and get inside. We had that problem with a swim wagon going off the ramp of an LCM and it went right down and sank like a submarine. They will float if put in just about horizontally and maybe a slight downward slope if you have a little ramp but certainly will not take much to actually get water through there. Only a few seconds and if it gets up in here there's a vents in here you can see down there's a vent in here looks like you could see down inside and uh, certainly don't want to get water in those areas these vehicles look like they did take some pretty good punishment because if you see here in the photograph they're axle deep in mud or sand fairly good load with five people on and also towing a trailer. Some details you can add are especially a lot of lines because you'd be mooring this, tying it off. Some photographs actually have a small anchor, a small Danforth anchor sitting on the deck somewhere. Usually it's tied to one of the tie points. Uh, you just don't put line on the deck and not have it tied to something because if you need to use it in an emergency you need to already have that pre-tied you don't want it. all right that really leaves one question unanswered is how does this perform in the water and so we're going to take it we're going to dunk it in and it's sitting and floating in the water and if we look down we could see just the very top of the tires maybe about one sixteenth of an inch above the surface of the water we have about an inch of free board the distance from the top of the water to where it would start flooding in the vehicle and let's take a look at this and see how it performs in the water right now the wheels are just turning So basically the vehicle would not do anything. It's moving slightly forward, just like a paddle wheel would do. Deeper the part of the wheel is getting have more traction than the in the water than the upper part. So let's try the propeller. Propeller would push the auxiliary switch and then we pull the trigger. And in the back I could see some water being pushed out and the speed is variable and the tires are not moving. And it does go backwards as well. So the, the auxiliary switch causes the vehicle to switch back and forth between the wheels and the propeller. They cannot run at the same time. Overall, I'd give this a baby four and a half stars out of five. Not a reason why I didn't give it five. Five for performance, definitely. For a little vehicle with a small motor, it certainly went up that uh, incline pretty good. Maneuverability, it was okay. A fairly large turning radius, but maybe the original vehicle was like that accessibility to everything and it had a big hatch in the front that we could get at the motor change the battery not a problem i did give it a little bit of a ding because of the fact that it does not have a figure but toro could have supplied with it maybe added a couple five or ten dollars onto the price whatever the value of the figure would be sold with the vehicle i think that would have added a lot to it it looks like you can use the same figure that's in the toro half track steering wheel being a little bit undersized and the fact that none of the lights worked and none of them were wired so they don't work but other than that i think it's a nice little vehicle to have to to a collection especially if you have 1 16th armor uh, you might not have something like that with you they did make them in somewhat large numbers and they were both in europe and in a pacific theater 
and I think it is just a cool little vehicle especially if you have a pool or small pond that you can depend on uh, not getting it lost in.